Okay, my name is Frederick, and I'm an artist working on the interstice of art, science, technology. Now, um, since so many years, I'm really focusing on developing the blackest black material in the world, and I'm trying to create a void space, something that you totally disappear in. So, but when you think about it, the question is also, is black a color? And we know uh, that it's quite confusing. So on the level of pigments, you could say that it is a color because you can mix the pigments and of course you get black. So is it a color when generated as light? Of course not, because it doesn't emit photons. So one of my favorite artists is Yves Klein, 1950s, 1960s, and he also played with the idea of a void. Um, and in addition, he collaborated with scientists to develop a synthetic resin, which is called Rhodopas. It's a polyvinyl acetate to preserve the luminosity of the pigment. So I really thought to myself, how can I go beyond pigments? How can I introduce the next level? And then I kind of focused on nanotechnology and nanoparticles. And if you look at the Lycurgus cup in the middle, it's a Roman cup, and you eliminate it from the back, it goes from green to red. Um, that's totally Harry Potter. And it's due to a surface uh, quantum mechanical effect uh, called plasmonic resonance, where electrons and photons start to interact. So nano actually means dwarf, it's Latin for dwarf, and is the science of being very, very small. So if you take an average human hair and you make it 40,000 times smaller, that's round about nanoscale, it's one billionth of a meter, so it's very small. So in 2010, I went to Rice University in Texas Houston, and it's the heimat of nanotechnology, so that's where it all started. And in the 70s, astrophysicist um, Harold Crodo, he was looking into the interstellar medium, trying to find carbon molecular chains, and he found them. He went to Rice University in the 80s, collaborated with chemist uh, Richard Smalley, and together they made the first synthetic molecule, uh, buckyball, or Buckminster Fullerene. And Professor Lijima, he found a way to extrude them into a tube, a carbon nanotube, and you see just there, it's a hollow tube, and it has the diameter is just incredibly small. So then I started to think, if this is all possible, um, can I make an artwork of it? So what would it be? And then I thought, okay, let's take this painting of Kazimir Malevich. It's an icon of non-objective painting and suprematism. It's made in the 1915s. So let's make a super black square. So how do we produce this super black material? So we started in the lab by cutting a silicon wafer, putting it into an ion sputtering machine where actually you evaporate atomic-sized particles on top of your substrate, which is on top. Then it goes into a chemical vapor deposition room where you have a, a flow of uh, gas, it's ethylene, which has this carbon-carbon double bonding, and it starts to react with the catalyst seeds which are on the substrate, and suddenly you see this forest of black material growing, and it's quite, quite fascinating, in fact. So in the middle, you see a scanning electron microscope of this super black material. And so there is just one thing I have to explain here. It's called the cavity principle, and that's how we capture all light. So I told you about these carbon nanotubes. It has a very thin diameter. So now let's think about a ping pong ball. And this ping pong ball is a photon, right? And you have a box which is totally empty and you make a little hole in there. So this photon travels to the box, slips into the little hole, and there it gets lost. And the chance that it gets out is almost nihil. That is the cavity principle. That happens also with these carbon nanotubes because this photon, this ping pong ball, cannot enter this carbon nanotube. It can only go in between the vertical aligned carbon nanotubes, just in between, where it will you know, travel under the surface and probably never surface again. But there's another thing, which are the nanowires on top of the carbon nanotubes, and it's almost like hair, which I don't have, and it diffuses the light in all directions. So from every angle you look at the black material, it stays as black. And also the irregularity of the surface, because if it would have been flat, it would have been a mirror, and I didn't want to have a mirror, of course. So finally I made a couple of artworks, and I call them nano paintings. So currently, I'm collaborating with uh, John from NASA and his team to develop um, the black is black, but a more improved version. So basically, we are trying to create more adhesiveness of the carbon nanotubes on the substrate. 
which are also trying to upscale it because it's 20 billion of carbon nanotubes per square centimeter. And the third thing is we want to make three-dimensional objects, so actually carbon nanotube growth on top of three-dimensional objects. And why is this interesting? Because imagine now you have a three-dimensional sculpture which is totally black and you see it, it will just appear as a cutout, as a two-dimensional thing. So you're making from something from three-dimensional, two-dimensional, which means you have to touch it to understand the complexity of its geometry. And that is interesting, because then the artwork really grows into the imagination of the person who is looking at it and touching it. Another thing I'm interested in is the photonic qualities of this super black material. So how can an artwork become also a harvester for energy? And can it be used in public space? So this is a render of um, a three-dimensional sculpture. It's currently being built in titanium by the use of digital manufacturing. And this model is now being used to grow carbon nanotubes on. So it's going to be super black. It's a model of the coal mines under Belgium. Uh, so the rela relation with carbon and carbon, uh, it's clear. So uh, I hope that I made science a little bit more human and that I made art a little less ridiculous. Uh, so thank you very much. But before you maybe are not applause, I have also a little black hole in my pocket. And this little black hole I'm going to show you right now. It's a sample of, I'm just going to put this down, uh, of the blackest material in the world currently. And here it is. I mean, I'm wearing black, but I hope you see the difference. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you.